Welcome to One More Game presented by Hoosier Pickleball. I'm your host, Matt Brandenberger, alongside my healthy, I think, at least for now, hopefully, fingers crossed, my wife, Abby. Mentally or physically. (laughs) (laughs) Either or, yes. And as always, we are joined by our physical specimen, (laughs) Adam Moreno. Which I think you may notice my voice is a little bit better. Okay. Speaking of healthy, I was a little... More like this, yeah, a little uh-huh. more, a little yeah. nasally. and I think I'm more like a man. Oh yeah, I was thinking absolutely man, manly today, very very manly. <laughs> I got that vibe when you walked in the room. But there is <laughs> there is a lot of <laughs> lot of junk going around. Yeah. And Abby, how's your week been? Well, Crazy. Speaking oh, of yeah. illnesses, oh boy. So just the madness of that last week of school before Christmas, with mm-hmm. you know I got it, the teacher gifts and this Christmas party and this sing along and this and this, and then. Um, So Sunday, I'm making ham and mashed potatoes for our small group Christmas dinner, and Eleanor slices the tip of her thumb nearly off. It's hanging on by a flap of skin. Nasty. She's got blood. Blood. Yeah, I was going to say... That thing bled like nobody's. I mean, it's your fingers. Uh, so there's yeah, lots yeah, of yeah. blood. Like, ideally, there's lots of blood flow to your mm-hmm. fingers. She's got blood just dripping on the floor on her feet. Not good. Uh, Look so, like a crime is she scene. terrified? She's freaking out. Yeah. I well, and then I on. mentioned stitches were a possibility. Oh, she lost that, her mind. That didn't oh, help oh the no, Dad. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thankfully, we glued That's it. That's Dad 101. <laughs> I know. You just say I it's know. okay. It's okay. And right. calm her down. Right. You don't elevate. Like I am. I'm like Al. You're fine. I don't even have any kids. Go wash it. Matt's like, Stitch! Oh, God! Oh, God! Stat! <laughs> Emergency room! We've got Hospital. a bleeder! <laughs> Hospital! How'd you get the beans before the freight? <laughs> Oh, Matt, that's not great in emergency. We got a first timer over here. Right. How many right. kids do you have? It's our fifth I have one. five. Yeah. Hey, they're tough though. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because of like me, I'm right. like, Dad. go wash your finger. Right, right. So duct tape. Right, so we we do glue it back together, kind of, hoping what? to save the little. Elmers? Yeah. Uh huh. No. No. Well, my dad. Okay. My dad is a doctor, and he had. I don't came know. Over doctor's glue. Has his little stitch kit. His I don't know where you get kit. doctor's glue. At, so the doctor's son says, "Oh, just." Stitches. Yeah. The doctor's <laughs> son tried med school track <laughs> in college, lasted a semester. So <laughs> yeah. I don't have the stomach for it. I'll no be way. Yeah. Same yeah. Oh, yeah. no. So, but she's okay. We want to let the people well, know. Well, she's not. <laughs> yeah, her finger's still attached. Her, well, well, yes. But then the next morning she wakes up and she's mm, like, yeah. I don't feel so good. She and lost a lot of blood, she, probably. She, blood loss A, but also influenza A. Yeah. Oh. Mm. So she is diagnosed influenza and we're like, on lockdown now like nobody touch Eleanor stay away from her I don't want anybody else mm. to get it mm. we got people on Tamiflu and yeah. you don't know this this morning I have a I have a vodka spray do you use this you podcast can't... as to give information yeah, out like sometimes is it... <laughs> yeah. sometimes because he's looking at you like wait what do I, what don't I know oh <laughs> well <laughs> you said you don't know this yet but we're gonna be on a podcast and I'm gonna tell you stuff yeah. <laughs> well no this is so you can't throw a couch in the wash right Right. Well, so it's physically, I, it's right. heavy. So, so I have vodka spray. The, this morning, I woke up first thing where Eleanor was lying last night. I just douse it in vodka because I'm like, <laughs> we're killing all the germs here. Yeah. So anything I can't throw in the washer, I put vodka on. That Alky. T- our, our dog Tiger was licking the couch this morning. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, it, was, l- it looked a little. Ooh. <laughs> She's I'm like, sorry. I love this gal. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna try to beat it when I can, but who knows? Right. In the end. Yeah, it's, it's share and share alike in the Brandenburg life family. Life be crazy. <laughs> life be crazy. Yeah, and I I would add to that, <laughs> we're making the incredibly wise decision to mm. get another dog mm-hmm. as well on, um, on Saturday. Better so get sad. more vodka. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tiger's got to share. <laughs> Um, so long story, and if we're trying to keep this podcast anywhere close to a half an hour, <laughs> we're this not is not, the way, yeah, yeah, this not is, the way to do it. Yeah, not the way to do it. But yeah, we do have a dog coming. I'm sure you'll hear plenty of dog updates. Um, Maybe a TikTok, soon. I would think. Ooh, yeah. Probably. Faux show. So, all right. Well, let's jump into today's episode. We're going to talk through something that we briefly mentioned the last time, and we're talking left and right. We're not talking politics, so don't get excited, Adam. I know it's your favorite topic. Um, <laughs> right. But we're talking the left side of the court. I'm so far in the middle that people get mad at me. Right. Well, how could you not be left or right politically? <laughs> nope. I just am in the middle just to I'm make just you mad. I'm just camping right here <laughs> yeah, in the middle. Just camping out. Yeah. Love it. Fence sitter. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, so we are going to be talking about the left side of the court and the, le- and the right side of the court and kind of uh, what that looks like. So yeah. Abby, uh, kind of jump into this and, and kind of give us an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. So f- first I want to just make sure like this, this can be more 
can be more higher level. I mean, you're going to really see this at the higher levels, but it's right. always good things to think about. For sure. At any level that you are. And uh, even, I want to get better. Even so, in rec uh, right. play. Yeah. Kind of implementing some of these thoughts into your rec play with you and whatever partner you have. I'm so excited. If, so if you're more of a beginning player, you may be like, well, I haven't really thought of that before. Don't tune us out now because I think you'll um, really be able to pick up some mm -hmm. things um, that might help you kind of elevate your game as yeah. well. No, this is good. I am locked in because yeah. this yeah. is me. So awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. So I, I don't know how to really start the topic like other than do we call this like a like an alpha and a beta player or just left side, right side? Like how do we? Yeah, because we've <laughs> talked about that before. Alpha, beta kind of almost sounds like. Offensive. It's not. Right. Yeah, because it's not. But, it's just a role. But in in doubles, there really needs to be, and, and maybe with men's or women's, it's a little bit different. Mix, though, especially, it is more of a dominant role mm -hmm. and a supporting role. Mm -hmm. One might even use the term a weaker vessel, if we want to. I would never use that term. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> when you guys play, I don't think you want to say that. <laughs> never. <laughs> right. So in, to, in mixed, so we'll go with mixed doubles for now. Um, we can maybe talk about gender doubles later, but. Right and two right-handed players which is the, I would say the majority of the population so my male partner mm -hmm. whoever that may be at the time um, I, f I fully expect them to cover most of the court like so there's the center line I mean we're talking they've got their side of the court and a part of my also uh, side of the court I, mean, I would say half of yours yeah, I think probably. it's fair to say they're, probably. they've got 75% of the court yeah. you know and at the highest levels you watch the oh pros play I mean it's it's unless that ball is not gettable for them. It's almost like the the left sided player, mm -hmm. the, the male typically is going to take that ball unless mm -hmm. they physically can't mm -hmm. and, and then the, the female will. Yeah, because there was so what the male is trying to do is funnel every ball to his forehand. So his forehand's in the middle. He's clogging up the whole court, mm -hmm. uh, taking you know, taking those forehands. And we're talking, and, I guess we should even start by saying, we're talking about once we're into that mm, third phase mm -hmm. of the dinking game. So, mm -hmm. and, and for beginning players, again, we've talked about, you know, a lot of beginning games don't even get there. They're the just struggle kinda, to the net. Yeah, the yeah. struggle, they, they're just kind of banging it around and they're not getting up to the net. Um, so once you've gotten there, you see that's where the kind of cat and mouse strategy piece comes in. And that's where you really are seeing yeah. more of the left sided <laughs> player taking it. Yeah. So I've just, I really have gotten into the habit of, I mean, I really, I really watch a lot of balls, like go to my partner, even mm -hmm. ones like literally that are in front of my feet. I do expect Matt to get that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, unless I call mine, which right. what you brought up communication. So do you want to? Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's what I would say. The biggest takeaway for, for beginners out there and for everybody is communication is so key. So if you're playing rec games and you're not used to playing with your partner, you've got to make sure you know who has that, that ball. And, and typically it should default to the person, assuming both players are right-handed, it should de default to the person on the mm -hmm. left side because that's going to be a ball in the middle. It's going to be their forehand opposed to mm -hmm. uh, their so, partner's backhand. Yeah, what's easier? Who's Who's got a better shot? Me when it's right at, in front of my feet or you, and that's mm -hmm. just your forehand. Right. I mean, that's easier for you to get. Absolutely. Like geometry and math right yeah. there. So As, Especially if it's <clears throat> awkwardly kind of in front of you mm -hmm. and it's kind of that, do I kind of scoop it with my forehand mm -hmm. or do I go to my backhand? That can be a tough shot. Mm -hmm. And when we've talked about dinking, we've said trying to put it right at your opponent's left foot. As a right-handed player, that's kind of the hardest shot to dink. So let the person on the, mm -hmm. on the left take that for you. Yeah. And as so even as a female, I tend to um, want the my male partner to take all the overheads he can take anyways because, I mean, specifically overheads because, my, I mean, my overhead is not going to be nearly as effective as any dudes. Um, so I actually did a little bit of research. Men's rotator cuff muscles. Here's the physical therapist. Are nearly 50% yeah. stronger than women. Wow. Which gives them far more power in an overhead than a woman does, which is why men have the stronger serves in tennis. So I, I actually have miles per hour here. Um, the a man's overhead tennis serve is... Uh, average is 120 miles an hour. Some of them much higher. Much yeah, higher. Yeah. This is average. Sure. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't, and I don't know where Serena, who's a, a beast, falls right. in here, right? Sure. But and women is 105 miles an hour. So I mean, quite a bit yeah. of difference. And so that's why I also love pickleball as somewhat of an equalizer in women. We don't have an, we, yeah, and more. we don't have an overhead serve that starts the game. Yeah. We have an underhand serve because ground strokes between men and women are actually fairly similar. Which is yeah, that's yeah. really miles per hour. Yeah. yeah. So it's really that overhead stroke that is a big advantage that, that really sets it apart. So I will allow my male partner <laughs> to, to take, take yeah, which so is why we lob a female. Yeah. yeah. And then I rush the net. It's, it's just interesting <laughs> to know some of the, the physics or the science behind that yeah. as well. It's not just like, you know, men are stronger than women. Well, there's like a physical mm -hmm. like difference there. And who'd have thought? Yeah. Who'd have thunk it? Mm. But that is, yeah, I, I do, I like what you said there too about that that is a gr great equalizer. Mm -hmm. And even the rule changes, and we're gonna actually talk about this in our next episode mm -hmm. uh, with some of the rule changes, but there is a concerted effort to make sure that the serve is not an advantage giving tool in pickleball. The serve was designed just to start the rally. Yeah, so mm -hmm. stop start spinning it, Matt. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and well, I, I have to in just <laughs> a, a, couple few, weeks, just a yeah, few days. Yeah. 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 So, so, so somewhat, somewhat of a rabbit trail, which I appreciate rabbit trails. Um, but in mixed doubles, while women are genuinely the target, I mean, women do probably see more action in a game. Um, your job as a man is to clog up that whole court so that it's hard to get to me. So you're having to hit it. Yeah. You're, so almost, far, dare, you're almost daring the other mm -hmm. team, like you know, come at me, come at, come at my forehand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, you know, so I'm, you know, as I'm uh, cross court dinking, probably to the other female, mm -hmm. right? I also am, am wanting you mm -hmm. to, to anticipate a high ball or a ball that you can just right. come in there and get. So if the female or whoever's dinking to you doesn't get it far enough over mm -hmm. to you and leaves it up high enough, then that's a ball that I can attack. So that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the strategy piece that, that you're looking for. It is a left-sided player. I'm looking for where where is that one that's just, just high enough mm -hmm. that I can attack. Mm -hmm. um, and but, I want you to do that. Yeah. Please do. Right. But then that opens up the next piece of it that, that can be, <laughs> And this is just that fine line, uh -huh. and I cross this fine line uh -huh. <laughs> way too often where you cheat a little too far over mm -hmm. to the right, and you expose. I mean, there's there's times I find myself where I'm straddling the center line, and so I'm leaving, you know, 20 feet wide is the, is the court, so I'm leaving nearly 10 feet exposed over mm -hmm. there. Now, you get most of them. You right. really do. Yeah. But you're going to get beat every now and again Absolutely. with the amount of space that you're leaving open. Yeah. So here I am looking on, I'm on the right side. I'm looking across from me waiting for that guy to expose his line. And I'm going to pounce on that. And typically it's also not only he's exposed it, but it's his backhand. So if I can, if I can anticipate that and, and what we would call like hitting behind him, Right, um, I'm gonna hit behind. I'm gonna hit behind a poaching guy all day long. Behind him, meaning yeah, more to his back. More to his backhand. Yeah. yeah. And so then, um, but you have said you even bait women to do that. You're like kind of not just women. That sounded like well, sexist. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's across <laughs> from you. Hashtag me too. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm not baiting women, sweetie. Are you catfishing them? <laughs> <laughs> Come to my van. <laughs> <laughs> I've got candy. <laughs> Um, but if she's a, if there's a woman across from you, yeah, whoever, you're like whoever, jumping. But even in men's, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's fair. you're trying to, you know, expose just enough so that they think, oh, maybe I can go uh -huh. there and then jump. And, you're but, anticipating right. that. And again, that's like the next level strategy where I love that piece of it. And so often I go a little too far. I think I can get back. And, and you can't. And I can't. And then that's mm -hmm. when you said last week, the walk of shame. Yep. Mur, mur. Put, put your head down and just. Well, mur. Yep. And then, well, then. I, this has happened to me, so I think I've got this this line across from me. It's his backhand, mm -hmm. and then, but the guy has anticipated it. He earnies it, and yep. I get nailed in the chest, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, Argh. so the, the earning again for those of you that don't know <laughs> that is when you jump across the, kind of the corner of the kitchen, uh -huh. and so that ball's up. You think, ooh, I, I've got him down the line, and nope, they, he's there to to jump over, mm -hmm. hit the ball out of the air, and give Abby some chin music Ugh, which is like 
I am like simultaneously super impressed and so <laughs> irritated. <laughs> She, like, she, she'll often give like I'm a not nice, even mad nice shot like, yeah yeah right. like I hate you I'll yeah. sometimes I'd be like I hate you but also I nice respect job. it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah. I get it so right. so Let's, we let, yeah. let me just yeah. uh, pause this here because I want to make sure that we um, give a word to our sponsors so we'll take a quick break we'll come back uh, and continue our discussion with the left side right side and how best to play that be back in just a minute Are you new to the game of pickleball and looking to learn the basics? Or maybe you're an experienced player who wants to take your game to the next level. Both Matt and I would love to help. That's right, Abby. We are both level two IPTPA certified instructors and would love working with you, either giving you private lessons, group lessons, or hosting a clinic. We also offer unique video coaching utilizing the latest in drone technology. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, or TikTok by searching Hoosier Pickleball or email us at hoosierpickleball at gmail.com. Also, check out the show notes for all the links to our social channels. All right, welcome back to One More Game presented by Hoosier Pickleball. We're talking today about different sides of the court and playing left and right, and we've talked a lot about mixed. And we mentioned before the break, but want to say it again, that this isn't just something that we talk about with mixed play, um, especially at higher levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the system is designed. What Colin Johns? Uh-huh. What, what's his quote that he yeah, said? Yeah, he said the system is designed to play into the left sider's forehand. So I have no doubt that Colin Johns, the is, high, yeah, the, uh, is a great pickleball player. But yep. he's he is um, trying to play into Ben, his brother's right. forehand, and they are the best mm-hmm. men's doubles team. His brother Ben is the best uh, mixed team with mm-hmm. Annalie Waters, and. Uh, ben is a left-sided player, and then so on the female side with Anna Lee, she plays the right side, right, and mm-hmm. does it extremely well. She basically almost sits on that baseline. Yeah. Or on the sideline. On the sideline, sorry, yeah, not the baseline. Um, on the sideline and just is ready to load on her backhand. Like, so like if she, it's she, her forehand, it's out. It's out, yep. Yeah. So she knows if the ball's Colin coming to too. her forehand. Yeah. And so, yeah, and Colin then mm-hmm. um, kind of supporting his brother. And, and the story behind that that I've heard Colin tell is that when he got into pickleball a little bit later than his brother, he said, you know, what, what can I do to support you? It was such a supportive role, such a cool thing for an older brother said to his younger brother, like, hey, I know you're the best. I want to play with you. Like, help me you know, mm-hmm. be, be your partner. What do you need? And so Ben basically like programmed Colin yeah. to, to be like, you know, this is wow. exactly what yeah. I need. That's amazing. So we have a graphic that I'll add into the show notes that kind of goes through this that, yeah. um, I think Colin put on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. He, it was actually helpful. an interview that, that he mm-hmm. did, I believe back, uh, a year or so ago and was one of the best interviews that I've ever heard where he really explained that piece of it. And, and again, like I said, I, I jokingly said at the beginning of the show, like a weaker vessel, um, but it's an extremely important role. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have a friend. What did he say? So, yeah, um, this it, and so to be fair, it's it's a mindset that yeah. you have to be in left or right sided. And so he during a tournament in a in men's doubles was going to be the right sided player. And he said, um the right side takes a different mindset. So shout out to people who play the right side. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, and conversely, I'm like, shout out to the people who play the left side because <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to play the left side, really. Right. And this is um, somebody who typically plays on the left, uh-huh. but had kind of taken a role where he played with a really strong player who was more of a left-sided player. So he kind of had to change his mentality. So talking about those mentalities, you know, the right side is just you've got to be a – just a wall, just Mm -hmm. consistent. You're going to see a lot of the dinks coming back and forth. You're just trying to keep the point going, not make mistakes. Whereas the left-sided player is kind of more the aggressor and maybe riskier, maybe a little riskier. And so, so it's okay for the left-sided player. Maybe that's why I like it is, is I don't feel as bad making those mistakes because I know that, you know, I, I might make one mistake, but then, um, the aggression a couple points later will pay off and it'll win a couple mm-hmm. points as well. Yeah. So. so, I mean, really being the right sided player, it takes a lot of trust in that left sided player. Like you have to, well, I mean, really the left sided player also has to <laughs> have some trust in, in <laughs> me, the right sided player that I'll get it back. But right. I have to let a ball, a lot of balls go by me. Yep. Assuming my left sided player is getting that mm-hmm. with his forehand. Yeah, and that's which why is I, hard to do sometimes. Like right. Matt will be like, stop taking the middle ball. 
Yeah. That's my forehand. Right. I had to work on that. Yeah, and because it is because there's sometimes she's like, well, the last time you weren't ready for it, and it's like that's true. It's just kind mm-hmm. of, and that's why chemistry and continuity mm-hmm. and playing together, knowing um, each other's games is really helpful. Wait, are we talking about marriage or pickleball? All of the above. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, just wasn't These sure. These all blend together. <laughs> this is why we love pickleball so much. Sanctifying in our marriage, the unity our, of a right. pickle yeah. and a breadstick. Yeah, it comes full <laughs> circle. Back to that, huh? That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, did we, so Adam ha- kind of had some good things to. Th- yeah. So, so Adam kind of give us your perspective, maybe as someone who doesn't play quite as much, not playing any tournaments, you're just doing rec play. Yeah. Um, how do you see this all kind of fitting in for me? It's so fascinating to hear you guys talk so much about the forehand, just because mm. I don't feel strong with it because the way I've been doing things from, um, ping pong and everything is I'm just prefer my backhand. Yeah. And so to hear you guys talk so much about this, I'm like, well, I guess I could play on the other side then, right. you know, mm-hmm. and be You'd fine. You'd be an excellent right-sided player. So, so yeah, I mean, if you did start playing competitively, then that would be more where you would naturally go would be to the right side. So you'd find, and, and that's, that's a good thing because yeah. there, there aren't many people who do specialize in that because mm-hmm. most people want to be more of that dominant role. Well, I, I so yeah. what's funny is in rec play when, I find myself on the right side. Like, you know, I win a point from serving on the left side and then you switch sides, right? And I'm on the right. I'm always like, yes. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I, yeah. I, I, now that you say that, Mm -hmm. like, I realize, like, a little party goes off in my head when I'm I'm on the right side. Uh I feel better. Uh And do do you understand the concept of stacking then? So you could actually, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You could set it up. Now, in the rec play, nobody's going to, not, yeah. yeah, It's going to be very uncommon. But going to, my um my buddy's house alex who is oh, oh. literally literally just called <laughs> i still don't believe but that he exists yeah. we're so and now it's freaking cold but like mm. we will i promise mm-hmm. you this Excuses. that we mm-hmm. that we will so but like at his house and stuff i can say like hey i've learned a little bit about like stacking and stuff why don't you stay on the left side i'll stay on the right side yeah. and it's you know it's just also just kind of fun to learn it's fun to just experiment and rec play, so Absolutely. might as well ask. Yeah, yep. and, and that's what I, I prefer the left side, but I'm trying in, in rec play, especially trying to play more on the right, not stacking, even if we're playing, mm-hmm. uh, just to get more comfortable, because mm-hmm. sometimes you do get stuck over there. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the points aren't there. You can switch during um, your returns, but that's yeah. that can be kind of difficult. Yeah, and I, I just playing with Matt all summer and fall, I feel like I have just gotten so used to the right side that when I get on the right side, I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. I know what to do right now, yeah. but on the left side, I'm like, yeah. that's your, yeah, that's yeah. your comfort level. You get right. sweaty. I, yeah. I, I'm sweaty right now, guys. <laughs> I'm scared. Sweaty. I like how that's a theme of the podcast. Right. Abby, yeah, Abby is sweaty. Abby's sweaty. Maybe like, I love that. Maybe if she didn't wear like, <laughs> well, yeah, you're wearing a parka. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> right. a little bean. I right. know it's cold outside though. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Well, I think that's gonna. Are we? We're yeah, really well, trying to. Oh, you guys, these. we did it. I think we're we're close. Anyways. Well, we yeah. have to do something we love, though. Oh yeah, you want to start? Yeah, I love love. I love. All right, that was me. Uh, good job, thank okay. you. Um, I have to just give a tiny little cute little shout out to my six year old who, mm. while she is sick, she's mm. the sweetest little sick sick oh, girl. Man. Like mm. it, she, there's nothing cuter than little sick kids who are cuddly. I, I know. Think. Like, I listen, yeah. I would take this from her if I could in a heartbeat. But I tell you what, like, curled up on the couch, mm-hmm. sucking her little fingers. Just, you don't, I just, just don't get sick, please. I won't. <laughs> but, like, you know, I take her her toast, and she's like, thanks, mom. Like, she's the yeah. sweetest. She's right. not like... Because she's usually a spaz. So if, she's if, a it calms her down. This kind of slows her down. <laughs> so we're like, oh, look how cute you are. And then <laughs> yeah. She's like... Well, you feel bad that she doesn't I know, feel well. I know. So but, it's like, Take the pain away, but just stay but like... But I kind of love it. Right. Okay, anyways. All right. <laughs> um, I'll give you, for, for my love, I'll give you a shout out. And I, I don't think you mentioned it. Maybe you kind of did and just how crazy life has been. But you are done with the Christmas shopping, wrapping, all of it. And hey, all... Hey, that's yeah. big time. Yeah. That's that is, big time. Yeah, she's, she's been a rock star <laughs> here. So still with plenty of time to spare yeah on the clock she has gotten it all done and i'm very thankful for that so let me just take this opportunity to say thank you you're welcome great job Aww. matt will be just as thrilled to see what his children get <laughs> as yeah. they are <laughs> Whoa, that's cool <laughs> Ooh, one lego cool there is going to be <laughs> one present that matt's going to be like "Ooh, can yeah. i play yeah i was, really think you'll like is that it. the little i think i maybe saw that did last you see night. that is it like an old school little 
like basketball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully the girls aren't uh-huh. listening. A spoiler alert. You're um, gonna love it. Yeah. So that that's you did a great job with that. So Thank well you. done. Well done. Thank you. All right. Well, that will do it for this episode, and we appreciate all. We've gotten so much good support. That's the other thing. You I'm guys loving. are the it's, best. Yeah, we just we love our listeners. Yes. You guys have been really encouraging. Uh, we're going to keep going. This is episode nine. Um, I, I, technically, with our bonus episodes, so I think it's, we're at ten or yeah, eleven, something 10, like that. Yeah. But you know, we're no end in sight. As long as Adam's ready to help produce we're we'll show up every week and we'll be here so please help spread the word though leaving those five star uh, ratings does help uh, share with a friend share with a friend uh, if you are a sponsor out there that wants to start <laughs> actually paying us to do that that would be great too yeah so. one, and one thing i want to point out yeah the reason why i want you guys to like and subscribe and and give us five stars is what that does it makes it easier for us to bring on better guests Mm -hmm. and more famous people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we want this podcast to be better for you the listener so we don't want you just to give five stars because it helps us we want it to help you and the the bigger that we get and the bigger that we grow the better guests that we can bring on which would be so entertaining to have someone famous on the show and so that's what we really want so make sure you guys please subscribe and like and do all that stuff that everyone always asks you to do right but that's why we're asking yep so and no spoilers but we do have a couple things in the works that we're we're kind of excited about so yep uh hoping 2023 is is a big year for one more game boom all right you guys have a great day thanks again As always, we want to thank our sponsors, Hoosier Pickleball, Indiana Physical Therapy, and Pickleball Rocks. In addition, a big thank you to our production company, Caraggio Media, and the 95.7 WELT studio in beautiful downtown Fort Wayne. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or find us on YouTube at One More Game Pod. That's the number one more game pod. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to leave us a five-star rating to help us spread the word. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok at Hoosier Pickleball for all kinds of fun tips, tricks, and other family nonsense, and also some great discussion. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week.